Uh, my best advice is to become friends with your breath. Use your anger to create something instead of destroy something. The breath is what sparks the inspiration. Mm, so, whoop! Very intense. <laughs> how much energy it takes for something to digest versus something uh, just fluid. It's important to know what in nature we're harmonious with and amplify that as much as possible. And Hi, and welcome to this new episode of The Light Leaders. Today, I'm with Devon Graham, aka the Black Air Bender, your pioneer of parasympathetic breathing, mixing music with your passion as a producer, an uh, artist who also founded Crystal Lenses and other useful tech like copper dilators, scalar plasma, and more. We also did five years on liquids. Today, we'll mainly talk about breath and how to live a more beautiful life thanks to your breath. So thank you so much for joining. Thank you for having me. First question to you is what are you grateful for right now? Oh, I'm grateful for breathing. Mm. I'm, I'm grateful for the opportunity of breathing life into progress. Mm. Amazing. Amazing. So let's get into it. How did you go into being passionate about that simple but powerful thing, which is breathing. Oof. Uh, losing everything to my business partner. Mm. Um, but the, the spark of loss uh, showed me the, the spark of abundance mm. at the same time and how abundant we all are with our breathing. And it's something that's with us 24-7, 365. And I... I grew up always listening to um, all different types of artists and the power of that, that passionate spark that uh, can influence a whole generation, influence music, influence even the political spectrum. You know, that's the power of uh, that art and that inspiration that comes from the inhale, the, the inspo, the inspire. And... And that's what I want to do. I want to breathe life into more inspiration. And mm. that's where the passion comes from. Mm. And just seeing the ripple of what that can do. Mm. Thank you. And it seems to work because when I look at you, Devon, you seem like a pretty chilled, relaxed guy. I can feel your nervous system very relaxed. Thank you. Mm. So let's get into it. Like a lot of people are quite stressed, they have shallow breathing. So what's your best advice for people on how to breathe more properly, let's say? Uh, my best advice is to become friends with your breath. Mm -hmm. That's my best advice. Beyond uh, the aspect, just beyond the aspect of technique, it's understanding that our breath is a friend as well. It, it's an entity, it's a being. Uh, I've had videos of my past students um, breathing life into uh, uh, a letter they were writing to a loved one, etc. And one, one of my students caught themselves breathing onto this um, item and you could see the spark of energy coming out of her mouth. As long as when there's intention in there, the breath of life that's coming out of us, it, it matters. It's not, you know, uh, when it comes to even losing weight in general, it's not the pooping, it's not just that it's the fact that we're exhaling all of that weight that we're quote unquote losing or shedding mm. so there, there's matter literally in our exhale there's intelligence in our exhale mm. you know there's intelligence in our breath <laughs> amazing so being friend with our breath when you say that to me it's like observing the breath and let it be as it is, which is also a practice you do in Vipassana, for example, just observe the breath as it is without judgment. And at the same time, it's, um, there's an element of training also. Like Sometimes I try to breathe more through my belly, through my nose. So is there a proper way to breathe? Yeah, mainly with our nose and uh, mainly with love as well. Mm. Literally, um, also understanding and knowing that the exact exhale that you let out to the world comes right back to you. 
So we're literally breathing in Caesar's breath. We're, we're breathing in all our great ancestors' breath. And we're also breathing in every solution that is available no matter what aspect of life mm. you're going through. And it, it mainly starts with the nose because the more we use our nose and the, the more we use our nose, the more of our sinuses get activated. And our sinuses don't just end here, they end all the way up in the hippocampus as well. So it's beneficial to more use of the nose than the mouth because the more we use the mouth, the more it turns off the sinuses. And with that being said, when you're adding intention with the breath now, having a, a dialogue saying that I'm, I'm inhaling progress, I'm inhaling gratitude, I'm inhaling etc. Anything quote-unquote positive or progressive you could think of, think of yourself breathing life into it as well on a daily basis. Mm, beautiful. So you had a hard, hard to breathe, but also the intention that you always you put with it mm. yeah and that that also reflects into any religion as well the breath is always in uh, religious practices in general so uh, using that that blueprint we can integrate it into every aspect of life mm. is it in every religion almost every i can you can point me to any religion i'll find the word either spirit which essence means breath Mm. at the end of the day as well mm. interesting yeah and also um, breathing more through the belly I guess rather than yeah, the chest mainly through the core your center that's, when you want, that's where you want to breathe from through the core and the beautiful thing with the nose is there's no lag time in terms of ear so when you're exhaling pushing out the stomach and inhaling, pushing in, you're creating a nice rhythmic flow going back and forth. But you get to feel uh, the breath as one cohesive unit, especially mainly breathing with the nose. Mm. Thank you. And do you also practice breath work as in, let's well, say you can speak of breath work as how to train a calm, relaxed breath, but a lot of people in Ubud, for example, if you go to a breathwork session, it would be often um, a lot of, um, uh, how do you call it when you breathe really Hi hard? Hyperventilating? Hyperventilating. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm more on the, the parasympathetic sense, and uh, when we go through our, our breath guide training, we don't do any breath holding, mm. we don't do any, um, any mouth breathing mm. uh, whatsoever. And I can still get a person to those same states without even hyperventilating, mm. even with uh, even with the mental breath work. I've even shown uh, on brain scans live as well with the mental breath work that you don't even have to hyperventilate to get to those same uh, factors. Mm. That's why my number one advice to anyone is to make friends with your breath <laughs> and not like force it too much. Yeah. Mm. So. What's the breath work that you facilitate? So I call it, um, well, I now call it bioelectric breathing and uh, adding scalar movement in there where we add the, the movement or down to the atomic structure of what the, the cells are in terms of that spiral. So integrating those movements with the breath to create a bioelectric resonance in the body, then we can harness and maintain a rhythm and then echo that into your everyday life. Mm. So that's what my perception and my, um, my breath guide training really focuses on is bringing that into everyday life no matter what it looks like. So I don't like to put the breath in a box, but more in a sense of whatever your Life is, the breath should be like a mirror. So no matter <laughs> where you're spinning, the mirror is still constant. But I know the environment's always going to change because that's life for humans, etc. right? But you're that mirror internally and externally. Hmm. But then do you work also on using the breath to change your... Internally, you feel, right? yes, internally. internally. So... 
Uh, so we also focus more on the internal breathing than external breathing, I would say. So I guess you would say mainstream is more focused on external aspect of breathing, and we're more focused on the internal aspects of breathing. What do you mean about internal and external breathing? So for instance, if I'm, if I'm taking in, holding my breath, I'm actually taking in the external world yeah. more, right? Because you're taking the external in and holding that. If I'm technically exhaling and there's technically less of the external forces integrating with that at that point, that's technically 100% you. So when you focus more on internal breathing, you mean you focus more on the exhale? On, on the exhale, but beyond the exhale, what is the force behind the exhale? And then there becomes the pulse that is echoing what we even consider air at that point. What is, how can we um, integrate more with that pulse and find that steady rhythm? Mm. But the exhale is definitely the gateway there for sure. Mm. And the exhales are technically our first breath when we come into this world because we're in the womb. We have the embryonic fluid. We've got urine all up in our, in our, in our throats, <laughs> etc. And then when we come out, keyword coming out, exhaling from source, from the mother, what are we doing? <sighs> we're, 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 e we're echoing from the source that is, even from that tiny seed, echoing, 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 echoing from source. Because we're also a constant channel, right? Echoing our, cre our creative gifts, our... Uh, material, whatever it may be, it came from source into this body, echoing out mm. through that exhale. And then when you take that exhale, then you finally take the inhale coming into this world. You know, ha. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Mm. Yeah, I'd love to know also, like people who do your uh, breath work, I don't know if you call it breath work, but breath training with you, what are the transformations? Mm. Uh, the transformations is, is the, the aspect that you get to the point where you understand that you are echoing into this world and out of it at the same time. So building that equilibrium state of going back to the mirror, going to that, <laughs> back to that zero point, it's understanding that they all get to the point of understanding how powerful a mirror uh, we are echoing from source. So with that knowledge, I would say uh, just more confidence. That's, that's another thing, more confidence in whatever uh, that person is doing or whatever they're doing in life. Mm. And does the confidence come more from maybe a um, biological reason from that different style of breathing? Or does I, it come I would more say from a spiritual... I would say it's uh, no. coming. It's coming from uh, depression, from depression, depression, because for depression or suppression or whatever is suppressing any internal emotions mm -hmm. at that point, that is uh, that's stopping expression. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the more we dive into uh, the breath, the more we understand how expressive we really are with every mm -hmm. breath. And so when you breathe better and you're more connected to your breath and to that intention um almost naturally stuck emotions things that are repressed will emerge oh yeah or you learn to to transmute those emotions before they even come out you mm -hmm. know learning to turn uh any suppressed emotions into into real power it's like the same thing I would say that's really relatable for everybody is anger, mm. right? I, I know it's really easy to release anger. I mean, the last time I was ang angry was uh, in Miami. My car got towed. But it wasn't the fact that the car got towed. I wasn't angry about that. I'm like, oh, car got towed. Okay, it's okay. We saw the car, though. And the guy comes out. And it was a fact that he said, oh, this is your car? I was like. Yeah, it's my car. Our, our friend owns the art gallery over there in the parking lot, etc. And he goes, oh, okay, okay, okay. 
hops in the tow truck and then just drives off. <laughs> Let's go. Drives off. <laughs> drives off to the the tow place. And when I got there, um, you know, I could have went off and went crazy. And I'm realizing I'm like, oh, on on the way Uber Ubering to the spot, I was like, all right, how do we how do we transmute this? And I could feel all the anger being built in. I was like, oh snap, this okay. I'm feeling everything, and I'm just all right. Let's tap in with the breath, and with every breath, I'm accepting more of the complete opposite, and and also focus on transmuting every little thing that the fact that I didn't read the sign, <laughs> you know, just acknowledging what led to that as my fault first, and within that, I could feel the burst of energy within. As I'm just breathing, and I'm letting the steam out, and I could just feel it building, building, building in. And I was like, "Wow, that feels the same as a DMT release. It feels、mm-hmm. the same as、um, even when you're sad or crying. Like all emotions, you know, in a certain sense, feel、uh, the same in a sense. But it's up to us to disperse it within our within ourselves and don't let it get stuck in one one、mm-hmm. part. And it could feel euphoric at the same time and Uh, I'm not what I've seen over the years too. I'm like you. You may even cry and laugh at the same time.、Uh, so that is a thing. You know, that's how powerful our emotions really are. And that's that's even your subconscious body just just releasing without you. You can't control that. You just got to release it, and you got to. You have to understand that that's what comes with being human. <laughs> yeah.、Mm. Thank you. I'm I'm curious with that specific example when you felt that anger. Were you simply observing the change in your breath, relating to that anger, which potentially would be a deeper, stronger breath? Yeah. Or were you consciously slowing down your breath、uh, to con- diminish yeah, the anger? Yeah. Continuously,、uh, consciously slowing it down.、Mm. Yeah, and you could feel the. Re- See the resistance that don't want you to slow it down. That's the that's wherever the emotion is、uh, trapped、mm. at that point, and you could feel it just pulling, 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 and then it'll start to just disperse.、Mm. It's very interesting. And and you feel like also deep down you know that wow, if I didn't channel it the way I did, I felt like it would have been wasted in some way or somehow, you know, or stuck <laughs> in in one、mm. part. Yeah, because it's that fine balance where. I feel you don't want to give too much energy. Sometimes in、uh, spiritual activities, spiritual circles, for example, and you're arise and you're encouraged to really follow out, that、yeah. like bitter pillow <laughs> and really let it out as a therapy.、Mm-hmm. And in some cases, also, it's bypassed, it's repressed.、Yeah. So it's kind of that middle point where you really feel it, but at the same time, you don't. Fuel it.、Mm, yeah, there it is. That, well, that's that's a transmutation right there.、Mm. Yeah. So use your anger to create something instead of destroy something.、Mm, amazing. Is that also your meditation practice to observe your breath or feel your breath?、Uh, that's the meditation to to play with the breath. Yeah.、Mm. It's like、um, like real meditation isn't just in the meditation room. It's also yeah, every it's, day, all yeah. the time. <laughs> all the time.、And、with the breath, you can always do that, right?、For、That's example, the point. For example, if I pass and I, if I'm in the middle of a meeting, I can't just sit in lotus and close my eyes and start observing、um, the breath. At least I can't do the、uh, the closing the eyes and the, the posture. But observing the breath, you can do that anytime, anywhere. Exactly.、Mm. Yeah, and even if you, for instance, if you know someone is shallowly breathing, and and、um, you can even make this a practice in yourself, and、uh, do not shallow breathe, but be conscious of the fact that oh, I can feel the contrast here,、mm-hmm. and I'm saying, and I'll affirm to myself that I'm breathing in the complete opposite of that breath pattern、mm-hmm. that I'm listening to, because even that starts to. <laughs> Uh, creep up into your subconscious in a way、mm. too. It's contagious, but it's both ways, right? If, Mirror if neurons. I, yeah. If I start to breathe really shallow, maybe you'll be encouraged to do that, and then you catch yourself consciously 
switching to slowing down, and I might not be aware of it, but that's also going to calm my nervous system down. Bingo. Yep. Mm. And the CIA uses uh, themselves as well a lot. It's called, um, uh, uh, well, yeah, mirror, mirror breathing, where mm. you would, they would use this in situations where they want to get out of a social uh, interaction. In a sense, let's say somebody comes up frantically talking or whatever. So they would exhale while they're talking. And then whenever they inhale, you inhale with them. And then you have a longer exhale than their inhale. And that'll start to get them to like slow down, <laughs> get, mm. catch their breath in a sense. Mm. I love that. And so you help the other person. In Without even letting them know. <laughs> and it's a great reminder for yourself. I, I like it when it's like, if I meet someone who has a slow breath, it's a great reminder to have a slow breath and calm. And if I meet someone who's the opposite, it's also the universe giving me an opportunity to remind myself mm -hmm. of doing the opposite. Yeah, man. Yeah. I like that. Great reminder. Thank you. Hmm. I'd love to touch upon um, some of the other things you do and how it relates to breath. So I've known you from watching an interview with Gillian Berry, actually. And um, it was mainly about you being five years on liquid. Mm -hmm. like this. Do you feel the diet influences the breath a lot? Like, what is there a strong connection between the No, two? the breath influences the diet. Mm. Yeah, because you, you, you notice how much energy it takes for something to digest versus something uh, just fluid. Mm literally fluid and uh, your quality of breath determines the quality of energy you're using in that moment in time for the digestion or you can learn to fire up the digestion but still fuel uh, the body in a sense where it's not too mm. destructive. So to you it's more having that slow calm breath that made you want to drink liquids rather than the other way around. Yeah, it's building the relationship with the breath because mm. you notice uh, the mm. type of density, the denser the food, the harder it is, what, mm. to breathe. <laughs> mm. Yeah. And there, there's a certain point where I just had to get honest with myself and like, this is a bit too much. Mm. So was for you the main motivation to be, to be label as liquid iron for that time? to have better breath, basically, to feel your breath more. Yeah, it, it also felt that also life was also becoming more fluid as mm. well. So it was a, a very interesting time where I could easily see uh, a recalibration of, of life, mm. quality of life. Nice. Can you show us this also? Oh, the projector. <laughs> But I've never done this on camera too, but you can also blast your teeth with it. Oh, well. But I, I mainly like to, to blast the Dantian area too. I, I wasn't sure what you were going to blast. <laughs> nice. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Pretty dense. <laughs> I don't know if I'd want to do it on my teeth. On your teeth? Yeah, it's a bit... It'll take some time, but yeah. you, can, you can also lower the voltage. So what does this do? So it helps produce uh, cold plasma, the scalar plasma projector. Mm -hmm. You can blast it on uh, your body as well. You can also blast it on your food and water. Mm. And it also helps generate more electricity in the body. Mm. So the more electricity in the body, the more, um, I would say, I don't want to just use the word alkaline, but it's just more efficiency of cells that don't have to use too much energy to create mm. and do certain tasks in the mm. body. That's yeah, really interesting because, of course, through our senses, we see the, the physical side of us, but we also know that deep down we're mainly just energy and mm -hmm. empty space. Yeah. So, yeah, there's a, it's, it's such a big world to dive into all this energy medicine. Kind of. they, all, they all bridge into mm. one. Because I assume the right breath will also like support all the things that this does. Huh? Oh, definitely. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, so we did um, an Elemental Symphony, and Elemental Symphony, we had everyone with the plasma projector, everyone was doing the breathing, mm. and we also had uh, brain mapping as well, so they were monitoring how the brain reacted. Mm. And overall, towards the end, you can see a nice equilibrium from the brain going from uh, very left brain dominated at the point. Mm. This was just on one person, though, but she was mainly left brain dominated and you can see different spots um, within her brain but towards the end you could see the whole chart going from spots that were highlighted to completely clear mm. so it brought everything back into like an equilibrium zero point spot mm. space using sound and, and breathing so that's why when everyone get the projector they i don't want to just sell them a product but they also get a whole library of my breath guided training in there as well because they work really well in combination. Exactly, yeah. And then activating more the right brain too? More activating just a state of, uh, a theta point where everything is mm. at a nice equilibrium. Which is great for creativity also. Exactly, right? Mm. Which is where we're spawned from, a creative mm. uh, outburst. <laughs> <laughs> mm. And, um, yeah, you, you, you told me that... The, um, being more connected with your breath, slowing down the breath, having intention with your breath was also um, a great gateway to more creativity. Um, a lot of the people who like this podcast, they're often entrepreneurs or um, influencers, creators. Yeah, and yeah, the, the breath is what sparks the inspiration. Mm. So if one is very connected with their breath, you're not just connected with your breath, but you're connected to the things around you, even they may be inanimate objects, but everything is breathing, everything is animating. So to me, the breath doesn't just represent uh, the inhale and exhale, but it represents contrast, the foundational mm -hmm. energy of contrast. No, no zero point, I just mean contrast in general, where you can't have yin without the yang, you need one or the other. So they go just like the inhale and the exhale one or the other we need both so when that breath and awareness is heightened you start to see the contrast not just with things by themselves but how they intertwine with mm. each other as like a, a symphony mm. or like a, a bit like a trip also where you actually see the things moving and connecting yes that yes that that tends to happen too <laughs> <laughs> which in the especially end especially echo breathing so echo breathing mm. Um, you can even go in the mirror and on your exhale, cross your eyes and you would see yourself multiplying. Then the inhale, have your eyes come back into neutral. You see yourself mm. into one. So you can also start to imagine yourself doing that as you're breathing. So that's like mental, mental breathing that I go over as well. And that in, its, in itself is actually happening in real time as well because nothing is truly in a stagnant motion, everything is moving in a molecular mm. space. Mm. So we're this one soul having all these little cells within us connected, moving around space. <laughs> mm. And do you have um, samples that we can put in the show notes in the description? That oh, for sure. As a, yeah, we can do As it. a little snippet of some of the breathing techniques you Yeah, man, we can put some mental breath work in there for sure. Amazing. Thanks. Yeah, that's cool. Oh, a little thing also on the glasses. These are crystals, right? Yeah, so this is emerald, and, and we have it copper-wrapped as well. Mm. I have brought some. So we source the crystals in Japan, and what's beautiful is they get rid of artificial light but allow natural lighting to do what it naturally does. Yeah, because uh, for example, for me, I don't really wear sunglasses because I want, I don't want that interface between the natural sunlight and my eyes. Also, a lot of people use sunglasses to protect from UVs. Right, UV. So the beautiful thing is, the natural crystals they refract twenty percent more uh, light. Oh wow! But the beautiful, the other side is that they also emit infrared as well, which is great for the mitochondria. Uh, it's great for when the sun is over above 
zero on the UV index. I think no, when it hits three, it's too much mm. for the eyes. But when the, U, when the UV index is at zero, that's the best time to, to sun gaze and like mornings and evening sunrise. Yeah, and basically, yeah. Mm. And uh, utilize the crystal lenses too. Mm. I'm pretty sure you send, you send gaze a fair bit. Yes, I do. <laughs> as Why? much as I can. Uh, it's it's such a nice, simple equilibrium. Like if it's there, why not? Mm. It's a nice way to equal uh, send a nice equilibrium wave back to the body and mm. for your circadian rhythm, recalibrate everything. I do feel charged usually when I send gaze. Yeah, because that's also happening internally. Like to me, that that's the soul of also mm. within mm. as well. Yeah. So just reminding ourselves like that's also inside us <laughs> mm. that's very interesting because you're like merging very like more more connecting with nature right i'm sure barefoot being barefoot and uh, sun gazing and eating fruits from the earth and these things but at the same time an element of technology also with um, the copper wires with the plasma gun and so yeah just as an observation, I see that some people go really into natural hygiene and all natural, and some people, a lot in our societies, go very fine on the technology side, and you have like a, a merging of nature and technology. Yeah, I think it's it's very important to to stay in that rhythm uh, because we don't want to be too distant at a particular point, you mm. know, and lose ourselves, right? So I feel like it's important to know what in nature we're harmonious with and amplify that as much as possible and and also wear it like our great ancestors once did. Mm. Thank you. We're arriving more towards the end. Yeah, man. We take a little breath together with the listener. Hmm. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you, brother. And is there a last um, share you'd like to make for this episode? Uh, yeah, definitely. I would say go check out Breath Dow 1 through 12, book number one. It's years and years of compilations finally put into one. I feel like that's a great start for uh, anyone who really wants to venture outside and make art with their breath. Mm. beautiful thank you so much we can put a link also in the description thank you for listening and thank you so much for sharing your wisdom and uh, for being here thank you brother